Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back to this uh, section on uh, short term memory and uh, we basically stopped uh, at the point of what short term memory is in the last section. We discussed the whole idea of what short term memory is. So, in this section we will look into as promised into a new conceptualization of short term memory which is called the working memory. So, the let us first look at why this concept of working memory was uh, produced or it was presented at all. The reason why working memory was presented was uh, the fact that the short term store as we discussed in the last class it was uh, basically problematic, problematic in uh, many reasons. Now, the short term uh, store the idea of the short term memory which is a limited capacity store with 7 plus or minus 2 items as the maximum entitle entitlement uh, of item which is uh, based here and also for a time duration of 20 second this posed a number of problems. What was it? The first problem that it posed is that this store limits the number of information that I can store here. So, there were limits on to the number of items stored here. Also, in a standard serial position curve, people should not be able to retrieve items in the middle of the list. So, this is how a serial position curves look like. Look like. So, these, this is where the recency effect happens, this is where the primacy ha uh, uh, happens and the items in the middle of the list should not show any kind of better recall. And so, this is the uh, this on this axis we have the percentage of recall on this axis this is the serial position of items. So, these are items which is the beginning of the list so, item number 1, 2, 3 fall here item. So, it is if, if it is a 20 item list item number 20, 18 uh, and 19 fall here and so, item number 11, 12 are what are present here. So, it was found out that these items when they were familiar to people the items when uh, these items when uh, which were uh, familiar to uh, people uh, or people knew it uh, somehow they uh, were. So, uh, basically then items which are familiar to people they uh, should pose a problem to people in terms of remembrance, but what was happening is that the items which are, which are familiar to people they were showing better remembrance. Also in terms of interference that we di uh, discussed, this interference that we were talking about uh, items of different codes or different types of items for example, auditory item and an auditory uh, Q or auditory test item and a visual test item when they were presented to people in STM or where people were asked to remember these two items in STM people were not uh, showing any kind of interference. And so, the fact of uh, the matter was this STM or the short term memory or the short term store that we are talking about was a little more than the way it was perceived into the Atkinson and Schiffen model. Now, since we have not discussed the Atkinson and Schiffen model very quickly we will look into it. The Atkinson and Schiffen model is very similar to the model which is called the modal memory model and so what <coughs> Atkinson and Schiffen says is that memory is a three part system which starts with something called the sensory register has something called the short term memory and then is followed by something called the long term memory. So, these are what Atkinson and uh, Schiffrin calls as the stores, the different stores and that is why he says sensory uh, store, the short term store and long term store. With these additionally 
Attention Schrefen also defines certain control on active processes which move information either from one store to another or move information out of these stores. And so, what uh, attention and shipment model discusses is there is something called attention here which makes information move from the short term register or the short term store to the STM, so short term memory and from the short term memory information is moves to the long term memory depends on a process which is called rehearsal. So, this is how the items move from one store to another. Also decay and interferences are two phenomena through which items move out of these two stores. So, decay and interference happens in terms of long term memory as well as short term memory. And so, this is what a brief overview of attention and shift model is. We will discuss this model in the long term memory. So, basically two positions to look at interference and in terms of items in the middle of the list or those items which people are familiar with. They showed higher amount of retrieval or certain uh, type of rules or certain type of uh, remembrance which required the uh, activity of uh, the LTM those uh, somehow went ahead and helped people in terms of remembering. So, with this conceptualization another kind of store was uh, perceived or another kind of store was thought of and that was called the working memory store. So, the information processing model of attention and shift and 68 described information processing as a two part process. The information representations being stored either as STM or LTM and the structure defining an STM and LTM store and also the processes which is moving it. Now, these authors they conceived of STM not as a store for seven or few pieces of information for few seconds, but found that the information STM somehow activates relevant information from LTM and gathers some of this information into STS. So, this is what the conceptualization of the STS or the short term store uh, or the attention and shift model was. But then as I described to the problem, these two problems led to the emergence of a new store, a new kind of uh, memory system which was developed by Bradley and H. Now, uh, Bradley and H 1974, they performed a series of experiment to test the model which was described above, uh, which was attention and shift model of how the STM uh, works and what is the way in which STM moves information from itself onto the long term memory or how it receives information from the short term store. Now, the design was to have participants temporarily store a number of digits while simultaneously performing another task which is a reasoning or language task. So, two type of tasks were given to people and as the STM store has 7 plus 1 is 2 item, it was believed that if number of items are increased onto the short term store, some kind of interference or some kind of forgetting would happen or the task would have a lower performance, poor performance. Now, the hypothesis was that STM capacity is taken up by stored digits, fewer resources are available for another task and so performance on the task would suffer. As I just described to you, what happens is if two kind of tasks are given and one task is being stored onto the STS or the short term store, then what would happen is that the next task which is given to you, if it is a multidimensional task paradigm and if a second task is given to you, the second task will not be processed or if it will be processed the performance will be very bad onto it. And so, this is the conceptualization on which uh, Bradley and H came up with a new dimension or a new kind of memory system which was called the uh, working memory system. Now, what was this task about? So, let us quickly look at the task that Bradley and H uh, came up with, the idea of Brad Bradley and H came up with. And so, what Bradley and H task was called the reasoning task with a uh, recall, letter recall. So, what this task generally had is people had first of all they had to keep some letters store a number of digits. So, a 6 digit or a 8 digit frame was what was what people had to store onto their memory. So, they had to remember this 6 digits. So, let us say the digits are 8, uh, 2, 8, 6, 4, 3, 7 this kind of a setup was given and they were people were asked to commit to memory this particular kind of a system which was there. And then later on they were given a another kind of a logical decision making task. So, uh, for example, here A, B the letters A, B are presented to people. Now, what they were required to do while holding on to this 6 or 8 digit task into memory is basically tell as quickly as possible verify the statements whether A precedes B, 
uh, people had to say true or false or whether pre B is preceded by A. So, this kind of a thing was uh, given to people and they had to keep these 8 or uh, 6 digits onto their memory and later on verify these statements. Uh, this A B is given to people and then shown to people and then they have to verify this A precedes B or B is preceded by A. Uh, what is the result of an experiment like this? Now, generally or uh, statement like B does not proceed by A. This kind of a statement uh, true or false uh, statement was uh, given to people. Now, uh, the interesting thing that happened here, the result of the experiment says that if the number of digits which were 2 to 3, if this is the number of digits which were held in memory, then the performance of people on the letter verification task on the A B verification task, it was similar to what was uh, there if no digit was given to them. So, two kind of people were there or two groups of people were there, a control group had no digit to keep in mind or keep in the memory and then do this very sentence verification task or letter verification task and in the next uh, case people had 2 or 3 digits in their memory and were needed to do this kind of a verification task. Whereas, it was found out that if the number of digits that has to be kept in the memory was more than 6, then the performance went down, there was poor performance. So, if sentences are uh, also, some of the interesting thing was found out that if the sentence was negative, if a negative sentence was used for this kind of a thing. So, B does not proceed by A. Look at this, this is a negative sentence. So, if a negative sentence or a passive sentence like this was used, now in this case is also the verification task was lower or the verification task was somehow less, but then a poor performance happened. So, basically then uh, what happened is 1, 2, 3 items were preloaded, a reasoning task was done and a letter recall task was done. But in experiment 2, what happened is 0 to 6 items were given to people, a reasoning task was done and a letter recall task was done. So, this is the result of the experiment. What really happened? So, Bradley and H, they found out that uh, two codes which are different. One is the logical code, the other is the uh, digit code. Now, if two codes are different, then uh, with lesser number of uh, items uh, digits to be stored, the performance was not uh, and uh, uh, becoming poor or not hampered in any way. What does this suggest? It suggests that the way STM is conceived in the short term store that if the number of digits are more, there will be poorer performances that is not was happening, which basically means that the short term store as conceived by Atkinson and Schriffen that it is a so store which have which holds on to similar kinds of 7 acoustic code uh, in, in acoustic fo code form similar kind of 7 plus or minus 2 items was not true. So, Bradley and H, uh, H in 1974 or Bradley alone in 1991, they found out that there was no common system for cognitive processes. There was no common short term store which was prevalent or which was available for all kind of cognitive processes used in this. Also, uh, the fact that memory load does not uh, disrupt the performances. So, if lower memory load are given, if two tasks are there and if a number, if, if one task requires some kind of a memory load or a given uh, little memory load, then the uh, performance on the second task was, uh, uh, was not in, uh, uh, hindered in any way. And so, this is the result that we are looking at. So, reasoning times in terms of reasoning times, letter recall, reasoning times, letter recall in terms of the load was 0 and 6 and as you can see what happens is if the load was more, the reasoning time and letter recall was higher than in terms of. Uh, so, it is equal stress in this case it is memory stress and this is the kind of uh, uh, thing that happened. So, if the number of load was 1, 0, 1 and 2 and what do you see that the reasoning time was very less. It is nearly 3.31 second in which people were able to perform the reasoning task, but as it increased the number of uh, uh, the time increased to almost 5 second for reasoning which, which demonstrates 
two things that parallel task processing can happen in uh, the STM store as it was uh, conceived by uh, what Atkinson and Stephen said. Also the fact that STM store was not the way that it was conceived in in, in bad uh, in Atkinson and Schiffen. So, STM was now a limited capacity store uh, the way it was looked at into Atkinson and Schiffen was no more limited capacity store it was it had more capacities it had capacities which is beyond which which was uh, sufficiently numerous and then uh, there are certain control processes which go ahead and move it. Also the fact that uh, the way this STM uh, is conceived on to uh, that it is a limited capacity is no more true that the capacity is more than 7 plus or minus 2 the way that is looked into. Also, if multiple tasks are given people are able to complete this task and interference that we talked about does is not the reason or could, could be uh, although it is a reason, but then if two different types of items are taken then both are can be processed which gave the idea. Also one more thing uh, to be looked at here is that both the tasks require different kind of jobs. The A and the A B verification task require people to borrow from uh, long term memory the rule for verification. For example, let us say this is A and B and if there is a sentence the sentence says that A precedes by uh, B. Now, if this is the sentence or the sentence says that B is preceded by A or things that B uh, is uh, not uh, A is not preceded by B. So, if A is not preceded A is not preceded by B if this is what you need to verify or B is not uh, succeeded by A if this is the sentence that you have to verify. First of all this is a negative sentence and then the words have a meaning and the way that the verification happens is that these rules are actually stored into something called the long term memory. So, the long term memory has these rules stored, stored up. So, what the conceptualization was that these experiments for Badley and H they gave up three they uh, brought to light three new important factors about STM. One that STM can talk to long term memory and can at the time of processing itself can borrow rules from long term memory and that is how this verification really happens. The conceptualization of Atkinson and Schiffen was that STM is a store which basically keeps items and works and links them through, together through a control process, but on itself it does nothing to the item. Whereas, Bradley and H prove for the first time that there can be this kind of a sentence verification task basically gave the plausibility or laid the foundations for the fact that more integrate or more complex uh, verifications or more complex uh, processes can be done onto this kind of tasks which were presented to people. Also the fact that if items different items where first of all it is not the caustic code in which most items are stored into short term memory it is different codes which are there and so there are different stores within the uh, short term memory is what the conceptualization was. And for the first time it was found out that this idea of limit capacity was not true. So, short term memory was not short of a limited capacity store other thing that interferences do happen, but then if uh, items are of slightly different uh, nature then these interferences are not so prominent if the items uh, two tasks has little uh, items to get uh, uh, looked interfered into then interferences will not result. Also the fact that at the time of the working memory execution at the time of when item is into STM uh, with the control processes there are other processes where uh, LTM rules can be borrowed and some kind of processes, some kind of operations can be done onto jobs put into this particular store. And so, a new conceptualization, a new idea of a store was thought of and this idea or this store was what was the working memory store. And so, Bradley and uh, uh, H gave the idea of this working memory store. Now, this is a very in interesting conceptualization because this till date this is the best conceptualization of short term memory which has been out there and <coughs> the best uh, results have been uh, approved of this. So, what is working memory then? Now, working memory as conceptualized by Bradley and H is a three part system. 
what happens is this itself this whole part is now called as the short term store although a new additional item as is included here which is called the episodic buffer which I have not uh, demonstrated here, but then this is the third system. So, it is a basically a three part store controlled by a central part. So, the conceptualization or the working memory is done in this way information from the short term store through attentional filters attentional processes reaches something called the central executive. So, my working memory store is a three part system it has something called the central executive, it has something called the phonological loop, it has something called the visual sketch, uh, sketch pad and it has something called the episodic buffer. So, information which comes from the short term store through the attentional process in different different modalities reach generally something called the central executive of the working memory. Now, what are the activities of this central executive? The activities are to initiate control and decision process. The central executive can be thought of as a manager, it does not do anything, it takes in information from uh, the short term store and then manages this information or basically redistributes this information on to two sub stores which are there. And so, the two sub stores are the phonological loop or the articulatory rehearsal loop and the visual sketch sketch pad. Now, information which is verbal in nature, which is auditory in nature or pushed on to the articulatory loop, articulatory rehearsal loop or the phonological loop. Whereas, information which is both special or spatial I would say in nature or which requires a, a visual medium which is a, in terms of a visual medium are pushed on to the visual spectral sketch pad. So, what basically is an executive control system it does is takes in information from any medium and throws it into these two uh, uh, stores which are there. Let us look into one by one these stores. So, basically the executive control system or executive store is basically uh, related to or its activities are initiating control and decision process. So, basically it initials control it distributes this information different information coming from STS into these two stores. Also reasoning language and comprehension. So, basically if a task requires people to do reasoning or uh, to basically go ahead and, and uh, uh, use language then in those cases uh, people if reasoning or language is the requirement of a job then in those cases what needs to be done is that uh, the, the central executive comes into focus and then it does this job. How does this does, does this job of reasoning what it tends to do is talks to the LTM through an episodic buffer. Now, as you know then in attention shift and model the LTM is the store where most information is stored. Now, in the upcoming lectures we will look into how the LTM is arranged, what is the way in which LTM is arranged and what is the way in which LTM really works. We will look into the parts of the LTM, but then most rules facts or the things that we call memory are stored onto what is called the LTM. So, what uh, this particular model does is that executive control whenever it needs to do a task it sends or it makes these reasoning language decisions based on rules which are borrowed from the LTM. For example, let us take a very simple task the idea of being uh, more. So, if a thing is more than something else let us say if A has more number of uh, if there are two jars and this jar A has four uh, uh, items into it or 4 balls into it and jar B has 8 balls into it and the concept of more. So, <coughs> the question is whether jar A or jar B is has more number of balls if that is the question which needs to be verified then the central executive does this verification by first taking this information the information that there is a jar there are number of balls and pushes this information into the visual system. Then through the episodic buffer it talks on to the long term memory and borrows the rule for what is more the definition of what you mean by more. So, what it does is it talks to long term memory and the long term memory then reveals or relates back the idea of what is more on to the episodic buffer. The episodic buffer transfers this information to the central executive which then understands what is more and then does the comparison. 
also it transfers information to long term memory by rehearsal and recording. So, whatever answers that you get from this kind of control processes, this kind of rules which are borrowed from long term memory and the information which is inputted through both the articulatory loop and the visual sketch, sketch pad, these informations uh, when it makes any kind of meaning or if it needs to be stored through a process of rehearsal, it is transferred to a uh, 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 a long term memory. For example, let us say if uh, there is an event you uh, see your uh, uh, picture from the fourth or fifth class and so you see your friend of yours and now you know this friend is now uh, married and does a job there. So, this information update which is called recording of information. So, the friend which is there with you in the fifth class obviously at that point of time he has he does not has these features of getting uh, married or uh, having a particular kind of a job or doing a particular kind of a thing or looking in a different way. So, these informations are added up, up to this event and retransferred it back to LTM memory. So, that LTM is updated onto these information. So, this is what also the central executive does and effects like recency a primacy are also which is verified by the central executive. Now, the central executive takes in auditory information and pushes out uh, these information into the phonological loop. Now, the phonological loop has a idea of something called sub vocal rehearsal. So, it does auditory rehearsal as I said the conceptualization of working memory is better than short term store because the short term store only talks about uh, auditory codes, but then working memory does not talk about auditory codes, it talks about both image imaginal codes which is image code and auditory code. So, phonological loop that we are talking about has auditory code as the way of remembering things and so information which is passed on from the STM is uh, if it is in the auditory uh, nature it is pushed from the working memory onto the phonological loop and then this item is rehearsed back is remembered in terms of sub vocal rehearsal. Also uh, this phonological loop has two different systems into it one is called the phonological buffer the other is called the sub vocal rehearsal. Now, the phonological buffer keeps information ready for being accessed. Let us say I tell you the word Ram is going to the village. Now, Ram is going to the village this sentence in an auditory code reaches your ear it is passed on from the STM onto the working memory. The executive central executive listens to this one channel information Ram is going to the village and pushes it to the um, auditory loop or phonological loop. In the phonological loop the buffer then keeps breaks away this Ram is going to the village into its constituent parts. For example, what is the subject, what is the object and what is the connector, what is the verb and loops it. The sub vocal rehearsal or sub vocal rehearsal is the, uh, is the process where this whole sentence is looped because it is needed. If it is not needed then it would not be looped and so if it is needed this kind of information is looped and the buffer is the place where the information stays for some period of time. Also, recycling of items for immediate recall is done by this phonological buffer, buffer and articulatory basically articulatory process are done here. But if an item or if a piece of information which is approaching is not in the vocal uh, dimension, if it is not vocal in, in any format then what happens is that that kind of information is then passed on to the visual spatial sketch pad. So, in the visual spatial sketch pad the information is then uh, broken down into its visual constituents and so visual imagery special uh, image visual search tasks are done by this visual search task and so here what happens is that the visual images are stored. Now, think about seeing a movie how is it that we see a movie? Now, when we go to a movie there is a voice and there is an act which is happening, there is a sequence of acts which is happening. Here is the best example of understanding how the working memory uh, happens. So, generally the audition or the auditory channel is a single uh, uh, channel uh, process. For example, when I say Ram is going to the village you have to listen to each word until and unless you come to know the <coughs> meaning of the word which basically means that Ram is going to the village has to be completely uh, said or completely relayed back to you. If that is not done then you will not understand the meaning of the word. So, basically then Ram is going to village if I 
auditory present you each word has to be presented to you and so each word has a meaning and so as words appear to the central executive they shall are pushed onto the phonological loop and the phonological loop then sub vocally rehearses one art after another so ram is rehearsed after is though ram is is now rehearsed with going then ram is going is rehearsed with two ram is going two is rehearsed with village and so this is the kind of rehearsal and then later on you can take an information but and so this that is why auditory channels or auditory systems are basically a single channel system but if i show you this as a display ram is going to the village now in one particular brief movement you can look at the whole image and you can make meaning out of it so that basically means that visual systems are more accurate now in when you are going to when you are in a movie what happens is the dialogue comes as a one channel system whereas the images that you see the actions that you see is basically in terms of several sequences which are there and so there is where the best example of working memory is what the central executive does it takes in dialogues because dialogues precede and so these dialogues are taken in and then pushed on to the phonological loop and then it is matched with the sequence of the action so the whole dialogue is taken in and is repeated around through the buffer and the subvocal rehearsal and then later on a meaning is interpreted of the scene based on the uh, the auditory feedback based on the uh, dialogue and the action and they are mashed together with the central executive so basically then both the information the auditory and visual information in a movie are passed on to the store the visual information goes on through sketch pad visual informations are slower it is basically stored down and articulatory information are speeded up and they are mashed together in real time for giving the meaning of what you hear and that is where a good example is now a third stage of this particular working memory is called the episodic buffer and the job of this episodic buffer is basically to talk to the ltm so this episodic buffer basically uh, does a feed forward and feedback connection with ltm so it takes an information to the ltm and takes that information also back from it that is what the uh, um, the idea of this phonological buffer is all about so basically then uh, an experiment was done to be, uh, to uh, test the phonological loop the existence of the phonological loop and so what happened in this experiment was uh, uh, what is the span or what is the capacity of this phonological loop so three sentences uh, were given to people they were read very fast and so these sentences so three kind of sentences ram is going to the village sita is doing something and uh, ram is doing something these three, three sent different sentences were given to people and people were uh, asked to relate back the last word so ram is going to the village so you have to read back the word way, uh, you have to remember the word village back or tell me the word village back so three sentences are given to people and they have to remember back the sentences so what was found out in this task it was found out that this span the phonological loop the efficiency of the phonological loop or the span of the phonological loop depends both on the comprehension and the task complexity the kind of task if the sentences are very simple it is easier for people to remember back the words if the sentences are long and complex in nature or if people are not able to understand the sentence if the sentence contains words which have difficult meaning in those cases the central executive additional input from central executive is required then those tasks are not processed and so basically the recall or the span of this uh, auditory loop depends on both the task complexity and the comprehension the way a thing is understood or read back also for uh, visual information or visual sketch pad similar experiment was done and it was found out the complexity or the visual system depends describes the span so if it's a simple system which is there which people have to look into then uh, it was easier for people to relate back the information but then if the information was complex then it was difficult for people to relate back the information so then what does the working memory uh, consist of so as i said it consists of a limited capacity workspace that can be divided between the storage and control processing and in in this term it is the central executive that we are talking about this component directs the flow of information choosing which information is to be operated on when and how as i said it is like a manager so it takes in a lot of information and then decides what information goes where then there is something called the phonological loop which is used to carry out sub vocal rehearsal and maintain verbal material so this is what we are talking about in terms of vocal and the visual uh, special sketch pad which is that part of the uh, working memory which takes in uh, information from the visual area 
Now, a very interesting study was done to, uh, to uh, comprehend the idea of STM and that was with something called stimulus independent thought the SIT. Now, the study was done by Tesdale. in 1995 and so what was the study? The study was done to find out what factors or what uh, stores of the working memory produces interference with stimulus independent thought. Now, what is stimulus independent thought? Let us first look into it and so stimulus in independent thought as it is defined is basically a flow of thoughts or images that uh, uh, the content of which is unrelated to the immediate sensory input. So, basically it is kind of a daydream. So, basically stimulus independent thought is a thought or is, is a kind of uh, um, a thought process which is not related to the uh, job at hand to the task at hand. So, uh, the thing was the task was to find out if STM disrupts by performing another task. If people do another task in of, of uh, short term nature, if people are doing some task which is basically of some nature whether it is visual and phonological uh, uh, in nature whether stimulus independent thought are affected by it in some way or not and that is what uh, uh, task was. So, two type of tasks were loaded on to the central executive, one task was uh, to verify silly sentences. So, sentences like uh, you can buy priests in uh, shops or a, uh, a dog uh, uh, a dog was um, raised on a flagpole that kind of sentences were there and so you have to verify this sentences whether this is possible or not and another kind of task that were used was more of a looking task so in this uh, uh, some kind of a simple and complex um, a field was given and within this field people had to find out known geometrical figures for example, triangles and circles. So, this kind of tasks were given as you can see this task is a phonological tube task and this is a visual uh, sketch uh, sketchpad task, so visual task and phonological task. This type of task were given to people and then people were asked to uh, uh, get engaged in something called stimulus independent thought or basically go ahead and dream. dream. So, in sessions participations, uh, so people then did this task and with that they also daydreamed. And so, what uh, happened is that at several points of time, so at several points of time people were basically stopped. So, this is how they are looking at this is the stimulus independent thought and they are also doing some other job. So, these tasks are loaded here and so at several points of time this is the time dimension. So, they are stopped here, here, here and they are asked to relate as what is going on to the through their mind. So, they have to describe their daydream. So, uh, the task is very simple in nature somebody is asked to daydream and with that daydreaming they are also given two more tasks either to verify a civil silly sentences uh, which could which had no meaning at all whether it can exist or or not and then also to uh, do a looking task which is basically equivalent to looking at something, looking at a simple field or a complex field and find out hidden geometrical figures onto it. So, basically then and in, in this particular uh, the framework people were stopped at various points of time since they are also daydreaming they are asked to relate back what is it that they are uh, uh, dreaming or what is it that they are thinking about. So, response categorization uh, categorizations of SIT of task it was found out that basically neither the, uh, the visual task or this kind of a thing both the task together went ahead and interfered this stimulus independent thought. So, if kind of uh, extra task doing was done if people were uh, doing some either either uh, uh, sentence verification task which is phonological in nature or a simple looking task which is uh, which is basically visual in nature this interfered with the stimulus independent thought which basically means that uh, SITs are something which are not independent of this kind of a loop. So, if a stimulus independent thought if people are daydreaming and they are also given another kind of uh, task which is to be done then it did interfere with the stimulus independent thought. So, it is basically then what was the result of this study that uh, basically central executive uh, 
uh, uh, is the reason why this kind of a disruption happened. Also, it was a version of this task was done in which people were able to do uh, tasks with the stimulus independence. So, people were asked to daydream and with this daydream they were asked to do some kind of a uh, routine task which they always did. Now, in those cases when people did routine tasks and they daydream then the performance of daydream the performance on relating back daydream was not that poor than in cases where people were loaded up with tasks or people were able, uh, asked to do tasks which required some part of either the phonological loop or the visual sketch, sketch pad. So, basically then uh, it is not these uh, centers or these these um, areas of the working memory uh, uh, identification or working memory system which is responsible for disrupting the stimulus independent thought it is the central executive. So, when it a uh, task has been well practiced routine in nature then the central executive can uh, devote enough attention and stimulus independent thought can process, but when a task requires some kind of information processing some kind of uh, jobs to be done or some kind of uh, um, matter to be looked at some kind of verification which requires some kind of an effort in those cases this stimulus independent thoughts got uh, receded onto. So, basically in this particular uh, section what we looked into is two things. So, uh, breaking up from the last ex, uh, sex, ex, uh, section or thinking from the last section where we looked at what is short term memory and what are the codes of short term memory, how it is stored, what is the conceptualization, what is the test for short term memory and what is the kind of forgetting happens. In this particular section, we uh, devoted ourselves on to a new conceptualization of short term memory which is the idea of working memory and we also looked at how this working memory is tested and then what is the uh, uh, different parts of working memory and what is the benefit of using uh, the working memory model over the short term memory model. So, one obvious benefit is that the use of uh, working memory does not limit ourselves to limited capacities first of all, then it does not uh, basically bound us onto the concept of limited time processing plus it says that the kind of uh, coding that is done uh, working memory model of uh, short term store does not uh, limit us to a particular kind of co code which should be used for remembering. So, that is another benefit which is there plus the fact that working model or working memory model allows us uh, to think about a conceptualization of a store in which the store can talk to LTM and can get uh, informations. And so, the explanation of the serial position curve that items which are familiar appeal to you more and so the central executive what it does is if an item appeals to you more if it uh, relates to you in some way if the relativeness is very high it is immediately transferred onto the long term memory or it is immediately verified because this item is already present in the long term memory. And so, the conceptualization or the question that came in from the results of the serial position curve that items in the middle of the list which were familiar or which were somewhere personal to people how they were remembered more that could be explained through this model of working memory. So, then working memory model is a better model of short term store or the short term conceptualization. And so, in this whole three part lecture on memory introduction to memory, we saw how this memory system really works. We looked at the short term store, the basic formats of the short term store of how what happens and how things happen. We looked at something called the short term store or what is the capacity of the short term store, what it does and what it does not and what kind of information is stored and also onto the working memory which is a better conceptualization of the short term store, what are its part, what is the uh, feedback it takes in, how does it connect to the long term store and what are the benefits of the the working memory store over to the short term store. So, in the next coming lecture we will look into something called the long term store or the long term memory. We will look into the various parts of the long term memory and then in upcoming lectures we will also look into parts of or different conceptualizations of working memory. Thank you.